so yes, I'm going to talk to you about uh, roller derby and transformation. Um, and the first thing I'd like you to do is watch just a little tiny bit of a music video. Derby saved my soul. Oh, really? And I'm going to have a look at that today. Um, and I want to talk to you about transformation. I want to talk to you about the transformation of a really popular American sports entertainment franchise um, to an authentically entertaining sport rediscovered by third wave feminists. I want to talk to you about the physical and emotional lives, the transformation of the physical and emotional lives of the people who choose to get involved with this sport and the community that's grown up around it. And I want to talk to you about a girl who knew she wasn't made for exercise, certainly not for team sports, and the transformation into a woman who skates four two-hour sessions a week and jumps at the chance to do more. So, what is roller derby? Well, roller derby was born out of Depression-era 1930s America, um, when they used to do these endurance tests where people would skate around for as long as they possibly could in a circle in the, in the hope of winning a prize, like a car or some money. And this showman, this circus guy called Leo Seltzer, realized that the most important and exciting bit out of all of these endurance tests was when people were skating around and they bashed into one another. So he decided to make a sport entirely composed of people skating around in a circle and bashing into one another. And the sport quickly became hugely popular. Um, and between the 1940s and 1970s in the States, men's and women's bouts were played to sold-out stadium crowds and massive TV audiences. Um, but it was like WWF, wrestling, in that the bouts were fixed. There were these kind of soap opera-like narratives of who was winning and who was going out with whom. And, um, and it wasn't really... It was, it was sports entertainment, not an actual sport. And the theatricality, that entertainment level of it... And apparently there's, a, there's an apocryphal story of them holding a roller derby bout in which halfway through the centre was opened up and there was an alligator pit in the middle, <laughs> Right? We don't do that in Sheffield. Um, but because this kind of theatricality overtook the actual sports element of it, it declined in popularity as a result. So the current reinvention, the current kind of reboot of roller derby was kick-started in 2001 in Texas by some third-wave feminist punks. And this is what roller derby looks like nowadays. And here's a, um, a kind of preview and clips version of uh, Sheffield Steel Roller Girls against Big Bucks Roller Girls. Um, this is our January game. And it's a game now of points and passing. It's a full contact sport that combines agility, extraordinary skating skill, hard knocks, big hits, individual brilliance, essential teamwork and tactics. And threaded through it is still some of that theatricality, some of that um, playfulness but fewer alligators. So they've got this kind of theatricality. We've got alter ego names. I skate as She-Ra. A friend of mine is Holly Hot Rod. We've got Oblivion Westward. But there's this whole kind of hot pants and sexiness and strength thing going on, as well as the elements of the sport. It's taken really, really seriously by the skaters, by the refs, by the fans. We get 500 to 700 people coming to watch bouts at, at Ponds Forge. So it's now, roller derby is now the world's fastest growing sport with an estimated 30,000 registered skaters skating across a thousand leagues across the world. And the first ever World Cup was held in Toronto last year 
And the sport is being considered alongside eight others for inclusion in the 2020 Olympics. The Sheffield Steel Roller Girls uh, was started in 2008 by uh, Pauline Chalmers, who skates as Jane Doe Agogo. And we currently have 90 members, two bouting teams, the All-Stars and the Crucibles, and recently a men's team, the Inhuman League, joined the Roller Derby community <laughs> in Sheffield. And I joined in October 2010. Like I say, I skate as she -Ra. My number is 242. Um, now, I was never into team sports as a kid. I absolutely hated them. I also hated exercise. And this was an absolute fact about myself. My name is Erica Packington. I'm 5'11", and I hate exercise. And I knew this because I told myself this story all the time. I told it to myself. I told it to other people. This was just something that I knew, right? And one day, about three years ago, I thought, what if that wasn't true? What if... I told myself a different story. What might happen? And I took up something called Krav Maga, which is an Israeli self-defense technology. It's not glamorous. and results in lots of bruises and kind of... Um, and I stuck with it for about a year, um, just about long enough to realize that actually I was all right at this exercise thing. I quite enjoyed it. Um, and then I discovered skating. And this was fun, it was interesting to learn, it was deeply physical and engaging, and God, it tired me out. Um, it made me go, wee every time I got on my skates. But most importantly, it also provided a tribe to hang out with. I now skate four sessions a week, and if I can fit, fit it in, I do some kind of other off-skates exercise. And I feel part of this amazing community of men and women who are coming together to do something that's both purposeful and social, and a hell of a lot of fun. Intellectually, I'm really fascinated by the ways that new publishing mechanisms are enabling, uh, sort of enabled by the internet, are changing the world, particularly the way they're letting communities of interest and practice and purpose come together kind of across the globe and down your street, um, like super global and hyper local, if you speak buzzword and jargon. And Roller Derby has helped me understand this in a way that's distinct from book learning. Um, so more than any other activity I'm involved in, I live the blend of a community that's deeply geographically connected to Sheffield, as well as completely globally distributed. And most of this is facilitated by Facebook communities. Again, geographically rooted, but not bounded by that. And one of the ways this global community kind of signals belonging is through the sharing of content. So the speed with which a good new fuck yeah roller derby otter, which this is a good example thereof, or shit roller girls say, will spread across the world would leave epidemiologists absolutely reading. This stuff is contagious, right? And the sociologist in me recognizes that, as with any other community, we create and share stuff to kind of demonstrate belonging, to talk about our experience, to kind of reinforce cultural norms about who we, who, who we are and who we want to be. And, you know, because it's funny. Um... But in my work, in my day job, um, the, the organization that I work with uh, is all about understanding and improving impact for individuals and companies and groups of people, communities, mainly for organizations in the international development sector. So essentially, if you want to understand kind of what you've been up to and do better in the future, we have ways of helping you do that. So I was writing a proposal um, like about a month ago, and I knew I was coming to do this talk, and I was stuck in this paragraph, and I wasn't going anywhere, and it was just horrible. And so I decided to dive onto Facebook for a bit of a mental break. Um, and I saw someone somewhere had made another reference to this phrase, Roller Derby Saved My Soul. And it crops up everywhere. So the song that we, that we introduced with uh, is by Uncle Leon and the Alibis. There's T-shirts, buttons, tattoos. Um, and it's like a golden thread throughout this community. And I thought, huh, really? Roller Derby saved your soul? How do you know? What does saved mean? Which bit of roller derby? How did it do that? So I decided to ask some friends uh, to help me. Um, and at work, we use this methodology called most significant change, where you basically ask people to tell you stories. Um, and I decided to ask a few roller girls to tell me a story, to tell me a story of their life plus roller derby. What has changed? In what way? How? What's made a difference? What would your life be like without it? What is it like with it? Um, and so I asked them to tell me the most significant change they'd seen in their lives since taking up the sport. I created a survey, I popped it up on my Facebook wall in our private members page, um, and, I, and I waited to see what was, what was going to happen. And I had uh, 25 responses. Uh, five men, all of whom are associated with the Inhuman League in Sheffield, and 20 women, uh, 14 through SSRG and through my own Facebook connections, um, but nine 
through a knitting forum. Um, so there's this worldwide knitting community called Ravelry, um, and they have a subgroup called Hard Hitting Knitters. So these knitters <laughs> who play roller derby, right? And I love the idea of this. It's, it's like these women who would like completely kick your ass and then knit you a cushion to sit on afterwards, right? <laughs> And so, but there's another is, uh, illustration for me of this connection between this kind of super global, these, these knitters are from all over the world, and this, and this hyper-local coming together around these connected communities around things that they love. And these ones happen to love both knitting and roller derby, which I think great. Um, so the most common themes and the responses that I got back was around the combination of this intense personal physical challenge, which was enabling people to develop skills and discover skills that they never knew they had. Combined with the enjoyment of the core activity of skating itself, so that kind of wee factor, um, plus this connection to a tribe or community. And particularly for some of the women who responded, Roller Derby was providing an activity and a tribe and an, and an environment that enabled them to access this kind of new form of femininity for them, one that was strong and sexy and powerful and rooted in an acceptance of difference and variety. Now, I'm going to pick three stories to tell you um, from, from this survey. I, I had loads of responses that I'd love to share all of them, but um, what I'd like to do is talk to you about Kim. This is Kim Ono, um, and I'd like to read you her story. Before Roller Derby, I'd been struggling for a number of years with an eating disorder. I was one of those girls you read about who wants to be a skeletal size zero. I had the body of a 12-year-old boy. My world revolved around food, or rather lack of it. I was always active and worked out a lot, but in an unhealthy way. I was insanely calorie obsessed, didn't eat any carbs or fat, so I rarely had any energy. I have no idea how I managed to keep exercising when I found it difficult to get up from a chair and move across a room. The eating disorder controlled every aspect of my life. Around three summers ago, I split up with my partner and moved into a flat on my own. I was constantly anxious and I wasn't functioning very well at work. All I did was go to work, exercise and go to bed. Until that is, I heard about roller derby for a friend who just started skating with the Lincolnshire Bombers. I found out about SSRG and went to watch them play Leeds on the Saturday of that week. I was instantly hooked and joined them at practice the next day. The eating disorder just seemed to fade away after that. There are so many shapes, sizes, and ages of derby girls. The focus is more on strength and fitness than being thin. I had so many positive role models to look up, with, uh, to, look up to in the sport. I've put on three stones since, since starting roller derby. I can't be sure, as I no longer have a pair of scales. I don't care what I weigh. I'm happy with my body shape. Roller derby helped me get there. It may even have cured me. This is Flying Dutchman. Um, and I want to tell you his story as well. There are a million things I could say that have changed for me since I started roller derby. My social life, well, now I have one. The slightly surreal experience of being considered a bit of a prodigy in a team sport was quite far removed from my memories of being the last to be picked almost every time playing football on the school playground. But the most significant thing for me is to learn to value imperfection. I used to despise it. If it wasn't perfect, it wasn't good enough. But roller derby only works because people are different. The sport doesn't, have a single, doesn't favor a single mental or physical type over another. And the leagues themselves, being set up and run by skaters, need a wide variety of people, skills, professions, talents, and preferences in order for them to work. We all realize that none of this will work if we were all the same, all perfect. And none of this will work if we went at it alone. And the last one I want to share was actually from somebody uh, through Hard Hitting Knitters who didn't want to share her name, but I thought her story deserved a wider audience. I have this habit of saying, wee, whenever I'm out on my skates. Wee! because I lost four inches off my waist. Wee! Because I'm healthier and have more endurance than before. Wee! Because I know plenty of women who have my back if I ask them to. And wee! Because maybe even if roller derby hasn't saved my soul, it's definitely saved my sanity. Now, it's not all unicorns, poop, and rainbows. All right? Balancing... Boyfriends, girlfriends, husbands, wives, children, work, friends, with the commitment required to be part of this community. Attendance, you have to skate twice a week. Uh, taking on a committee role, being social, having fun. All the fun bits and the not fun bits of being part of a community. And this is not a purchased commodity. So despite what marketers might tell you, community isn't about buying the phone or trainers or soft drink they, wanted to, they want to sell you. It's about time and love and commitment and purpose together. And sacrifice. So Benny Lugosi, a coach at um, Hull's 
angels, roller dames, and skaters with the Inhuman League, says, I've sacrificed some very important things for roller derby, including jobs, family relationships, and sleep. And if you see someone kind of smiling wryly and nodding next to you, they're probably one of the roller girls. I've got a complicated relationship with roller derby as a sport. This is a picture of me winning lead jammer at my first public bout for the Shepherd Steel Roller Girl Crucibles in September last year. I've been in training for nearly a year, um, but on this day, I got it. I finally understood something that had eluded me for all of my 34 years. I got why people spent hours on the rugby pitch in the rain or put up with having hockey balls thwacking themselves in the shin. And I'd never understood that before. This kind of combination of terror and fun and excitement and teammates and challenge and danger and tiger print hot pants and loud music. And I don't think I've ever been so full of endorphins. I was so completely hooked. It was amazing. And about a minute and a half after that photograph was taken, I broke my collarbone. <laughs> I took a really awkward hit uh, to my shoulder, and the collarbone snapped. Um, and at the moment, it's unfused. So collarbones tend to just heal themselves, and this one didn't. So it's kind of floating around uh, in a way that kind of skirts the border between being really, really gross and actually kind of cool. Um, but this has massively complicated my relationship with the core activity of this community that I've grown to love. I can skate, but I can't really play properly. I have to be careful about hits and falls, and I've pretty much made the decision that I'm never going to bounce again, which after that high, <laughs> I don't feel so good about, but anyway. So I've taken up refing, and I'm coming up against another established fact about myself. This is one of the other stories that I tell myself. I'm Erica Packington, I'm 5 foot 11, I don't do rules, and I don't do detail. And I'm hoping that my enjoyment of this sport and the community and learning and getting engaged in it will help me maybe power through that, like I did with the thing about me not, being, not exercising. So for me, I don't think I needed saving. And I'm, I'm an atheist, so I don't think I have a soul anyway. But anyway, but the most significant change Roller Derby brought about in my life, apart from the disturbing amount of orange clothing I now know and the fact that I will wander about in, in hot pants in actual public, um, <laughs> is that I told myself a different story about myself, one that challenged me to try something new. I found an activity that I adore, and I found a tribe to do it with. And I'm extraordinarily excited to see that, where that takes me and where that kind of thinking might take us. And that's it. <laughs>